Tomorrow, for that I know it's not what a day may bring forth. Man. All right, we on the top. We end up. All right, uh, this is your brother Yesaron, my brother Matthew, and introduce yourself, brother. Jim, Jim. All right, brother Jim. And today's lesson is going to be called Delay Night. Because a lot of times, even when we come in this truth, or when we're telling people about this truth, they like to put off. Because one of the because it's a hard thing. Change is hard for a lot of people. Coming to this truth, change is hard. And old habits are hard to break. So, but we must fight through those things and delay not. All right. So I'm going to start off with the scripture I always start off with. And it is John 8, 32. You shall know the truth and the truth is the only thing that's going to make us free. And we know that that truth is the law. So we want to start, uh, Matthew, you want to start off, you got something you want to say first? Oh, uh... No, I'm gonna um start in the middle when you um let me in. All right. All right. Hawk, uh, you got something you want to say, Jim? No, sir. No, sir. All right. So we're gonna start off. Somebody bring me out Psalms 119 and 59. No, no. First off, Romans. Still like you. Romans 13, 11. Joe, oh, Joe, well, come sit, come sit down, son. All right. Romans 13, 11. I'm here. All right. You ready? All right, uh, Jim, you give me uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 34. All right, uh, go ahead, read. All right. Romans 13, 11. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. So, like the scripture says, the Most High God put a deep sleep on his people. But now, according to the book of, uh, what's that, Joel 2.28, Most High God is pouring out his spirit on all, all flesh to wake up out of sleep. Now, we know that when you wake up out of sleep, we're not going to have all your cognitive senses at 100%. We're still wiping our eyes and yarning and stretching. So that's when the spirit comes in and give us the insight on what we do. Remember to say, he shall send the, uh, the rewap. And she shall bring all things into remembrance. So first thing we have to wake up, God said, because now it is high time to wake out of sleep. High time to wake out of sleep, sleepwalking, worried about worldly things, worried about partying, worried about uh, just having fun on Satan's playground. It's time to wake up out of that sleep and walk and follow the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. All right, I'll give me what you got. 13 and 4? Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 34. Okay. All right, 1 Corinthians 15, 34. Mm -hmm. Awake to righteousness. Hold on, stop right there. It says awake because it says awake to righteousness. And we know that righteousness is God, law, statutes, commandments. But sometimes we as people, we awake. But we'll wait to unrighteousness. We'll wait to Islam. We'll wait to Christi Sunday Christianity. We'll wait to uh, I'm God or the women's God, uh, uh, Egyptologist. That's not awakening to righteousness. God says, awake to righteousness. And there's a such thing called the conscious community. They're awake. They have zeal, but not according to knowledge. So first thing we got to do is awake to righteousness. Go ahead. And sin not. Mm-hmm. Some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. So some have not the knowledge of God. They have the knowledge of, uh, what's that, Islam. They have the knowledge of Egyptology. They have the knowledge of all these other things, but not the knowledge of the Most High God power. The Most High God, the creator of the universe and everything that the earth, wind, trees, everything that they're in. So they don't have that knowledge. They have the knowledge of this world. And just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it on the, a more base level. A lot of our people, they get these college degrees. Nothing wrong with that. But the Bible says the knowledge of this world is foolishness to God. We think that we got a master's degree or all these different degrees and all these different associate degrees.
that that matches up to the knowledge of God. That is far from the truth. So God said, some have not the knowledge of God. He didn't say you have knowledge, but you don't have the knowledge of the most high God. All right. So he says, I speak to your shame. And why is that? John, what's that? Um, what's that? Um, an ox knows his owner and his ass his master's crib, Isaiah 1 and 3. An ox knows his owner, an ass his master's crib, but Israel does not know. They don't even consider. God said, you don't even know who you are. You're calling yourself African-American. You're calling yourself black, which is a color. So he says, I speak to your shame. You don't even know who you are, but you got all these degrees and doctorates and associates and all this knowledge, but not the knowledge of the most high God. Um, all right. Um, give me Hosea 6 and 4. Hosea 6 and 4. <laughs> Hey Matthew, you can come in when you want to now. Okay. Uh, I got I got um Hosea six and four. Bring it up. Oh Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? Oh, so like it, so like it. Hosea four and six, my bad. So like it. Four and six. Okay. All right. All right. Hosea four and six. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt not be no be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the laws of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Mm. All right, so that goes back to what we just read in First Corinthians 15 and 3. He said, For some have not knowledge of God. So these prophecies have been fulfilled. We don't have the knowledge of God. When you go to Sunday church, they tell you God loves everybody. They tell you God will forgive your sins, but the scripture says God will not pardon iniquity. There can be no unrighteousness in the kingdom of heaven. So we don't have the knowledge of our God. All right, Matthew, you got something? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so we're going to go to James 4 and 13, right? All right. So you said the name, the name of the lesson is um, Delay Not. That's right. Right. James 4 13, find it, Joe. Yeah, find it for me, Joe. James 4 and 13. All right, James chapter 4, verse 13. I got it. Okay. All right, and it says, Go to now, ye to say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and yet gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and that vanished away. Keep, keep going. Huh. I didn't hear the last part. So lock it. Okay, verse four. Um, verse fourteen. Whereas mm -hmm. ye know not what shall be of the morrow, for what Got is it. your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Con 15. Okay, 15. For that ye ought to say, if the if for yet ye ought to say, if the most high will, we shall live and do this or that. But Con. now ye rejoice in your boasting, all such rejoicing is evil. Con. So it's saying instead of you saying that you gonna do this and do that tomorrow, mm -hmm. say a higher willing. A higher willing. Because you don't even know if you will be able to do this tomorrow. Con. Because you don't know of his promise. That's right. So anything you, you think that you're gonna do tomorrow, you have to make sure you say a higher willing. That's the thing that uh yeah, exactly. That's a that's the thing that or phrase that mm -hmm. we used to say. You know, and it's funny that the scripture said that because that shows that the way that we operate today is still the same way we was operating back in ancient times. Mm -hmm. Higher willing. Higher we willing. think that we know, we, we plan ahead. We try to plan for the future, but we don't know if it's, it's to come. So we always make sure we say a higher willing when we plan in ahead, right? right? And, yeah, and my grandmother, she was in the, in the Christian church, like uh, 
Romans 10 and 2 say they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Powering on. My grandmother used to always say, if it be the Lord's will, I'm going to do this. Or if it be the Lord's will, I'm going to do that. And I never really understood what that meant until I got into this truth. And I read the scriptures. So mm. our people have that zeal, but mm. they just don't have it. Now, she meant what she was saying when she said that. I mm-hmm. just didn't have the understanding of what it meant back then. But now I know what that means. We can't assume we're going to wake up in the morning. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Matter of fact, let's get our limitations. I think it's 322 real quick. Lamentations 322. Go back to these. Mm-hmm. Lamentations 3 and 22. Go back to these on the. Um... What got you? Yeah. You said 322? Yeah, 322. No, no, start at 321. Lanyan, do not put your food over there. You got it? I got it if you want me to read. Go ahead, huh? All right, Lamentations 3 and 21. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, have I hope Mm -hmm. it is of the most high's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The most high. Boom, right there. Every morning that we wake up, when you roll out of bed, we take that for granted. We take for granted that we're going to wake up in the morning, not realizing that that's God's compassion. That's his faithfulness. So every morning we get up, we got to make sure that we try to be better people today than we were yesterday. We can't take it for granted that we're going to wake up in the morning like the brother was just reading. We can't assume that we're going to wake up tomorrow and make all these plans. First thing, first and foremost thing, we got to put the Most High God first in our lives, first in everything. When we wake up, praise his name. Thank him for waking you up every morning. So that, that's, that's why I wanted to bring that one out, because he's faithful. But on the same time, are we faithful? Most High God is being faithful and holding up his end of the bargain. When our forefathers, the ancestors signed that contract or that covenant with God, we didn't keep our end. But God said he never changes. And we're going to get, get into that a little bit further in this lesson. God don't change. We're the only ones that change. All right. Um, uh, you got something? Yes. Um, Matthew, Matthew 6, 33. All right. Yo, Matthew 6, 33. You got it up. Matthew 6, 33. All right. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Con, I think I got that one in here. <laughs> While we worry about tomorrow and all this wickedness, and we making these, all these plans for weeks on or months ahead, but we're not focusing on the evil that's going, the wickedness that's going on around us that's trying to consume us. Every day, the enemy is trying to take your soul every day, but we worried about stuff three weeks in advance. Oh, I'm going to do this in two or three weeks. Oh, I'm going to do that. Instead of focusing on and keeping our eyes on the prize, which is the kingdom. Everything in this world is going to be burned up, but we focus more on those things than getting to the kingdom. So that's, um, why, the most, that's why the scripture says, take, uh, be sufficient to the day, the evil thereof. Worry about, not worry about, but stay fast, steadfast, and seeking the kingdom, you know what I'm saying? And, and the Most High God going to guide us through these evil times. If we take our eyes off that and worry about other things, how are you going to be prepared? How are you going to see those stumbling blocks when they come? Because your mind ain't on the kingdom. Your mind is on this world. Come. Come. All right. Uh, let's hit uh, Ephesians 5.14. Ephesians 5.14. You can get that, man. Mm-hmm. You got it up. Um, 
All right, somebody get Ephesians 5, 14, and uh, Matt, you get uh, Psalms 119 and 59. Then Psalms? 119. Yeah, Psalms 119, 59. Uh, Jim, Bible you Bible. get uh, Ephesians 5, 14. Because Joel is Ephesians 5, 14. Joel, come on. Ephesians 5, 14. It's okay. Psalm 119. Jeremy, if you're going to do this, you have to be quicker. Hey, Malak, do, do, do Ephesians 5 14 first, Jim. All right. Ephesians, right? Yeah. Put that down. If you read one, what? No, Jim is reading it. Psalm 119. Joe, yeah. you'll get the next one. Ouch. All right, so I got it. Go ahead. Ephesians five nineteen. No, five fourteen. Oh, five fourteen. Mm -hmm. All right. Where? Hold up. Wherefore he saith, awake that awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, mm. and Christ shall give thee the light. Keep going. Shall shall give thee light. Mm -hmm. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because days are evil. Boom. Mm. So that's the precept of what you just read, huh? Redeeming that's the time, mm. which means acknowledging what time we are, acknowledging where we are at in prophecy because the days are evil. You seeing our brothers mm. getting hung. You see our brothers get the neck to the to the back of the head. You see what's mm. getting shot. So redeeming the days are evil. We so focused on everything but what we supposed to be focused mm. on. Mm -hmm. And that's why we getting caught slipping out here. Come, you know come. what I'm saying? That's why we getting caught slipping because we got not. It's nothing wrong with a lot of things, but first and foremost, we gotta keep our eyes on the kingdom. That's the that that's what that's my that's my final destination. Mm -hmm. That's that's what that's what I want to get to high more than anything on this earth. And, but in order to get there, you not staying focused on that. You focusing on all these other things instead of what's going on around us and where mm -hmm. we are at in prophecy. We're in the book um, of Revelation. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And even in Israel, people think it's party time and time to hang out and, and kick back. And no, it's not time to do all that. We got to stay on the alert because that's what the enemy wants you to do. Get relaxed and get docile. And then you get taken out. All right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Proverbs hey, relax, 3, just real question. quick. Oh, you got something? One question. Um, okay. Is there is there somebody waiting in to get, to get um? Waiting to get in? No, nah, no, nah, it's just three. One, okay, two, three. Yeah, yeah I got coming. somebody else supposed to be coming, but they ain't. I see they ain't, they ain't tried to log in yet. Did you tell Doug is on Zoom? On Zoom, yeah, I didn't. You did. You got to Oops, Zoom. my bad. <laughs> All right. I'll say All right. It. All right. Yeah. So, like you just me. read, it says, "Arise from the dead." Now he's not talking. The, the scripture isn't talking about physical death. It's picture, the scripture is talking about spiritual death. We need to rise from spiritual death because Proverbs 21, 16 says, even us in this truth. And this goes back to, we need to be aware of what's going on, where we at in prophecy. Because Proverbs 21, 16 says, the man that wanders, that wander out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. We got to understand. We know who we are. We know what God mm -hmm. expects of us, but sometimes, like I just said a few minutes ago, we get lax and lazical and, and docile and worried about worldly things, and then we'll be right back in the congregation of the dead. Mm -hmm. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. So, and then First Timothy 5 and 6. Now, that was he. First Timothy 5 and 6 says, the woman that is in, if the woman that is in leisure is dead. So we can't take our life. The playtime, when we woke up, playtime is over. 
Mm, we woke mm. up when God woke us up to this truth. Playtime is over. It's nothing. It's, it's, I'm not saying that we can't enjoy our lives, but first and foremost, we got to stay alert to what's going on. Christ said we are mm. we are in His army, and if you're in the military, you always stay alert. A lot of us get taken out because we take our eyes off the prize and focus on other things. All right, uh, give me that Psalms one nineteen fifty nine. Let's get it. The late night. Um, late night and make haste not. No time delay. All right, go ahead. Up. Psalms 119 and 58. 59. 59. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me double check. Ah, you got a, uh, Jim, you got a, a parker for. Right, what? Yeah, I got right. the parker. Psalms right, 119 and 59. All right. You hear me, Malak? What's that? Psalms 119 and 59 says, All right, loud and I strong. Thought, I thought on my ways mm -hmm. and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. So the scripture says, I thought on my ways. When we came out of the world and into the truth, we thought on our ways. That spirit God put on us made us think, dang, this ain't right. So we thought on our ways and turned our feet unto his testimonies. Go ahead. Verse I made haste. Mm -hmm. and delayed not to keep thy commandments. So boom, I made haste and delayed not. I thought on how wicked I was living. I thought on my ways and turned my feet to his testimonies and made haste. He didn't say, well, like, like I'm going to use this example, my, my daughters. They say, well, dad, when you was our age, you were doing this, this, and that, right? But you're not promised to make it to this age. So you can't say, well, I'm going to wait till I get 40-something to, to change my life because you're not promised to even wake up tomorrow. And like the example I gave the brothers that uh, the other day I was speaking to, it was this guy in the break room and a job I used to work at. He walked into the break room, put some money into the vending machine and dropped dead right there on the spot. He didn't think that when he walked in that drip, that uh, that uh, break room, that would be a, he would never walk out. We don't we don't think a lot of times that when we uh walk out of our houses in the morning that we won't be coming home. We always assume I'm coming home. Or we always assume we when we get into altercations or disagreements or arguments with somebody else, I can I, I don't have to apologize right now. But don't let that book close on you with your unforgiveness because you're not Ooh. promised five minutes from now. We take it for Ooh. granted, we take God's mercies. And his grace for granted. But he said, I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. And one of the commandments is if you wrong somebody, apologize. You know what I'm saying? And even if you do make it 10 years from now, you still carrying that. You that that just more dead weight you gotta carry on your soul. Unforgiveness. That's weight. That's extra baggage. Why burden your soul with all that extra baggage when it's easy to say, if I wrong somebody, Hey, I apologize. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Apologize. And they say, well, damn, I'm getting tired of you apologizing and apologizing. But Christ said, if they, they apologize, if they wrong you, 77 times what? Seven. Seven. Apologize. Keep it moving. Because how many times have we transgressed or went against God? And we come to him asking him for forgiveness. That's true. If God had that same attitude, a lot of our people have all of us to be destroyed. We would be consumed. He said, but his mercy is what? Never end. Until they get to a point where they do end. But as long as you breathing, as long as you got breath, you got a chance to be a better person and repent and come back. All right. I, uh, I made haste and delay not to keep thy commandments. Give me Sirach 5 and 7. Sirach 5 and 7. Mm -hmm. Make no terror to turn to the Lord mm -hmm. and put not all from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Most High come forth. Boom. Stop right there. Stop right there. It said, for suddenly the wrath of the Most High shall come forth. You won't even be expecting it. You'll be going about your day. Oh, I'm going home. I'm going to do this next week. Or oh, we got plans for the weekend. Well, two months from now, we're going here and there. But that book says, suddenly the wrath of the Most High God shall will come forth. And in thy security. When you think that you're secure. When you, I'm in my house. I'm safe. God don't have God can send that deaf angel through that door and take you out. That man was at work. 
and drop you. You know what I'm saying? And your security. Oh, I got a nice job, a big house. I got money in the bank, but you can still get put to death by the most high without him even putting the thing on you. He can just turn you. He can just hit that switch and cut you off. Mm. All right, keep going up. And in thy security, thou shalt be destroyed mm. and perish in the day of vengeance. And perish in the day of vengeance. So that goes into another one that says, vengeance is of the most high God. If you wrong somebody, don't worry about uh, going back and getting paid back. Vengeance is of God. He going to pay them back. Only thing you have to do is continue to do what you're supposed to do. Don't try to take vengeance on him because the scripture says, make sure that you present yourself what? Spotless. You know what I'm saying? I can't be spotless if I'm trying to get payback on somebody who wronged me. Just continue to do what I'm supposed to do, and the Most High God will take care of that person. We've seen it throughout history so many times. They call it karma. That's what they call it, karma. I ain't, you ain't got to do nothing. God is the power. All right, I'm going to read uh, Romans 6 and 1. Uh, you got, you want to you uh, chime in? Um, uh, I got something in John 11 and 25. Bring it up. John, I get it. John 11 and 25. All right. John 11 and 25. And it says, Yeshia said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this. John. So. So he was speaking. He was speaking to a woman. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm the resurrection and the life. Right. Mm -hmm. He that believe in me, though he were dead, yet shall live. Right. Mm -hmm. And 26 says, can you read 26? My All right. Luke 1126. Mm-hmm. All right. The book of Luke. 11. No, John, John 26. We'll ask the, the next one down. The next one. Next verse. 926. 11, 11. Oh, 1126. All right. Uh 1126. Luke 1126. No, John 1126. John. Oh, John. John eleven twenty six, and it says, "And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die." Believeth thou this? So he's saying, "If you believe in me, you would never die." Mm -hmm. Do you believe this? That's what he's asking. Mm -hmm. So he's asking that question because you also have to believe. You have to believe in him. That's right. Okay. And that's that's what you were saying when it came to the baptism question that I asked you. Okay. Right? It mm -hmm. said you you said that as long as they believe in Christ and accept him, uh -huh. then they would be saved when it comes to the baptism. Mm -hmm. Not saved as you know, that's it. Yeah. But when it comes to the baptism, you have to believe. So that's why he asked that question. Do you believe this? Believe, believe, they yeah, believe about this. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you also have to believe that. Go ahead. Huh? Yeah, I'm done. Go ahead. Okay, and, and, and that and that's the thing. We say we have faith, and we say we believe, but when God, because okay, when you say you believe, God's gonna God's gonna try you. God's gonna put your your faith to test. You know what I'm saying? And I'm and, and and like I said before, I'm not I don't want to I don't want to present myself as perfect. I'm still working on some things. And a lot of times the most high God is gonna put you through certain situations over and over and over again until you conquer that. You know what I'm saying? Until you overcome that. And then you can get go to the next level. You can't get to that next level until you conquer these certain obstacles and stumbling blocks. So, but after a while. He's not going to, after a while, he's going to, uh, what you call it, make you have a reprobate mind. You know what I'm saying? Well, you'll just start believing a lie. 
you'll start believing everything that's not true about this book. Because after a while, God mo God will get done, God be done dealing with you. And hopefully he don't take you out all together. You know what I'm saying? But being a uh, reprobate mind and death is one and the same. Because now you're back in the congregation of the dead. You just ain't died physically yet, but that's soon to come. So we um, have to delay not and keep the law, statutes, commandments. And if we fall, get back up. A righteous man follows seven times and kill that powerful spirit. I, 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 got one more, Go ahead, huh? I got one more. Ecclesiastes mm -hmm. 9 and 11. Ecclesiastes 9 and 11. I got it. Ecclesiastes 9 and 11. It says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. Time exactly. Mm -hmm. Everyone, everyone will be uh, 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 a test to run the race. The race, a lot. Everyone has to stand the test. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times we get in the truth. We we get in the truth. You hot. You oh man, I know who I am. I'm God chosen people. Then you go forth in that race. But we get in our minds that it's a sprint, and forget that it's a marathon. You got to pace yourself in it. I'm not, I'm not saying we're supposed to slow down and get cold. We're supposed to stay hot, but you have to pace yourself. You have to have uh, patience with people. You know what I'm saying? Because when I first came in the troop, I had no patience for people. And still today, I'm still working on patience with people, people that don't understand. Because the book says, we are planting the seed, Apollos water, and the Most High God gives it the increase. Now, when I was in elementary school, we had a... a we had a thing where we planted watermelon seeds, right? And not all those seeds came sprouted at the same time. So when we plant this word, it's just like that. It's not going to sprout overnight. And everybody's not going to get it at the same speed. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes some seeds are just duds. They won't even sprout. So we can't take it that we are the ones waking nobody up. We're not the ones giving the increase. Our mission and our job is just to go plant the seed. If they hear it, that's good. Because Christ said himself, some have, some can hear and some won't. It was given unto you to know the mysteries of heaven, of the kingdom. It was not given unto everybody. You know what I'm saying? So we can't take it for granted that everybody's going to get this. Come. All right. So grace, Romans 6 and 1 says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound. And that's what a lot of people say, even people in the truth. Well, I'm on the grace. Well, well, no, let me say, let me, let me put it this way. A lot of people in Christianity, they say, well, we're under grace. But Romans 6 and 1 says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Well, I can't, well, I can change this and this and this about myself, but it's this one obstacle over here that I'm having a hard time with. Well, I'm not going to try that hard on that. But the scripture says, shall we continue in sin that we have grace? Shall we? Mm -hmm. We can. Exactly. It says, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So when you baptize into the truth, when you awaken, you know what I'm saying? When you say you were born again, how can you be still sinning? How can you, like if I know I'm sinning and I'm just going to throw up that grace card, that's my get out of jail free card. But no, it isn't a get out of jail free card. You know what I'm saying? Because like we said earlier in the lesson, you're not promised tomorrow. And if you die in your sins, then what? That's it. Then what's going to happen to you? Lake of fire and brimstone. Lake of fire and brimstone. And even though we put in these works, and even though we're going out on the highways and hedges, and even though we're going to feed people, we're going to say that to Christ at the end, what he's going to tell us. I never knew you. We got to present ourselves blameless. Hey, Malak, my son said he got a preset for the Lake of Fire and Brimstone. Bring it out. Bring it out, huh? Bring it yeah. out. From the mouth of babes. Go ahead, huh? You got it. 
almost there. Oh, there it is. Go ahead. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Boom. Judge every man according to their works. So if you're living in sin, mm -hmm. then the works, it, it doesn't add up. So yeah, you right. might be judged with the lake of fire and brimstone. Oh, praise. And, and it's a doctrine going out now. I've heard it a couple of times that hell is not a real place. It is a, a condition. Hmm. The blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into that dish they say it don't exist. You know what I'm saying? Because the scriptures, even the child just said it. The scripture says specifically that there's hell and brimstone. It is a it is a place. Now we are in we I will say this, I will agree with that in this state where we are now. This is hell for the Israelites because we're not supposed to be living how we're living. We're supposed to be on top. So for us to be where we at, it is hell. But that's not the hell that you're gonna pay when you die and leave here, um, living in sin. It's gonna be a different level of hell you're gonna go to. Fire brimstone, like the young brother just said. Um, All right, so Ephesians 4 and 7. Now, this is the one I want to get to because grace, like I just read, uh, somebody grabbed Ephesians 4 and 7, but uh, grace, a lot of our people like to use grace. Well, I'm not gonna change because we're under grace. Not understanding that grace is just a time period for you to get yourself right. Because while you're getting yourself right in that grace period and your, and your book closed, only thing God can judge you on is, like the brother just said, your works. That's what the only thing you can be judged on is how you live, how you treated other people, how you did you keep God alone. Now, now, God don't care about you as a good person. I ain't never hurt nobody. I paid all my bills. I, I worked. I paid my taxes. God cares nothing about that because the meek shall inherit the earth. The only thing the Most High God cares about is, did you keep these laws? It's just that simple. So you can be a good person and still end up in hell if you're not God keeping is. these laws, statutes, and commandments. Because the scripture says, Christ said it itself, there's only one that's good. So if you're not keeping these laws, what are you? Go ahead, uh, Ephesians 4 and 7. I got it. Ephesians 4 and 7. Mm -hmm. But unto every one of us is giving grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Boom. So again, like the, the example I used earlier with my daughters, they were saying, well, dad, when you was our age, you did this and you did that. You didn't get right or you didn't find this truth until later on in your life. But this scripture says, but every one of us, one of us is given grace according to the measure of Christ, which means everybody don't have the same measure or amount of grace. We see children, we see young people dying every day. They didn't make it to see our age. So you can't assume again that you're going to wake up tomorrow. You can't assume again that you're not, you can't assume that you're going to make it to see 50 years old. You can't make it to say, well, I'm going to put this off, this truth there. I, I agree with y'all with this truth stuff, but I'm going to live my life right now. You know what I'm saying? That's why the book says delay not to keep these commandments. Mm -hmm. Tarry not to keep these commandments because all of us are not given the same amount of grace period. Only, only Christ give us that, and it's different measures. Some of us die at 20, some of us die at 10, babies die, uh, adolescents die, uh, preteens die. People die at all types of ages. Everybody don't make it to see 100 years old. Everybody don't make it till they got gray hair on their chin. And, and, and praise to the most high, I made it this far. And I thank the Father that I made it through all the things that I've done in my life and still doing today to give me another chance to wake up, to give me another chance five minutes from now, to give me another chance to do this lesson with like-minded brothers and sisters and gather around and gather together. This is a blessing right here, what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? All Ooh, praise, we, and we can't take that for granted. So that's why we give all glory and praises to the most High God. This is not me. I'm just a vessel. We all are just vessels. And when we keep that in mind and not get puffed up, you know what I'm saying, just do the work. And hopefully on Judgment Day, we can walk through that gate, but we don't have a ticket just because we Israelites to get in. And we don't have a ticket that we're going to wake up in the morning. So all praises, read that again up. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. A measure to the gift of Christ. We not all promise to live the same exact amount of years. So that's why the scriptures is emphatically telling us to make haste and delay not. You don't know how much time you have. 
All right. Uh, give me uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and 11. And uh, somebody else give me uh, Ezekiel 33 and 11. Ezekiel 33 and 11. Mm-hmm. But read Ecclesiastes 8 and 11 first. Okay. You gonna have to get Ecclesiastes. I, I I don't got it in this book. All right, I'll bring it up. I, I, yeah, Ecclesiastes I eight and eleven, and it reads, "Because now this goes back to the grace period, and what we as a people do, like like children, if you get away with something when you was a kid." You say, oh, snap, I got away with that. And nine times 10, we're going to do it again. Nothing happened to me, do it again, right? But uh, Ecclesiastes 8 and 11 says, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Instead of, you know you did something wrong, and you try and you go back and repent and tarry not, you do it again and again and again. Verse 12, though a sinner do evil an hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him, but it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not God. Boom. So again, that goes back to that grace thing, and that goes back to that measure th measuring thing, the grace under measure. We all are sinners. We all have sin. The Bible says there is none without sin. But if you can repent, don't get caught in your sins. Don't let death catch you in your sin. Unrepentant. You know what I'm saying? Make haste and delay not. Oh, I sinned. Oh, I messed up. Let me go try to fix this situation. Let me go ask for forgiveness. Let me go repent to the most High God and try not to do it again. And try and try again until you're not breathing no more. Because once you die again, uh, it's over with because because sentence against an evil work what is sentence Romans 6 23 is for the wage of the sin is death mm -hmm. so because you haven't been put to death for the evil that you're doing you got in your mind that you can do it again and again instead of saying oh let me turn around and repent and tear it not to come back to God law statute commandments you know what I'm saying um Okay, Ezekiel 33 and 11. You got something out you want to bring up? No. My son have a question, and then he's going to read Ezekiel 33 and 11. All right, go ahead. But what if you like just keep doing wrong, but you repent, but you just keep doing wrong and repenting at the same time? Oh, man. Okay, if you keep doing wrong and repenting, and my wife asked me, we, 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 that subject or that question was brought up uh, earlier. You keep doing wrong and you keep repenting, right? What's the alternative? You breathing, right? You still breathing. I'm, I'm gonna use this analogy. It's uh, I think Matthew's chapter 18, where the dude, where the guy asked Christ, the guy keeps sinning against me. How often shall I forgive him? And Christ said 77 times seven, right? What's the alternative? If I don't repent and if I just sin and I don't ask for forgiveness, I'm just out here, you know what I'm saying? That's a good question, young man, I'm, I'm gonna say this. The only alternative is, you have to turn for your wicked ways, because like eventually, you're gonna get taken out by the most high God, or he just gonna give you that reprobate mind. But if you don't repent, or if you don't ask for forgiveness, then you have no chance. You know what I'm saying? You might as well continue in sin. So, that's a question. That's a good question. But like the scripture says, I can't, I, I'm not going to put no sugar on it. The wages of the sin is death. Um, that's yeah, eventually going to come like we just read in Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Because the sentence against the evil work is not executed speedily. We keep continuing the sin. And eventually he said, you're going to get dealt with. You're going to get put to death. So the best thing I can say is repent. Try not to fall. Uh, make haste and delay not. So that's a good question, young man. Make haste and delay not. All praises. All right, read what you got, little man. Okay, thirty-three and eleven, right? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Say unto them as I live, saith the Lord Ahiah, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? So boom, right there. Again, God don't take no pleasure in putting us to death. But he says, turn from your wicked ways. Because like we know the scripture says that uh, his word will never come out void. If he says the sentence against the evil work is death, that's what he's going to do to you. So he's telling you, why will you die? Turn. He's giving us a chance every day to turn from our wicked ways. Um, what he says he has to do. You got some add up. Um, also, if we go into um Matthew twenty one and one. Mm -hmm. All right, I got it. Matthew, hey, uh, get me, uh, hey, uh, Jim, get uh, Micah 718. I got you. All right, Matthew 21 and 1. So, oh, Salakia, Salakia, you know what? Second Corinthians 5 and 7. Okay. Might have went through this real quick, but this one right here is All right. real quick. Second Corinthians 5 and 7. Yeah. All right. Second Corinthians five and seven. For mm -hmm. we walk by faith, not by sight. Con, see, a lot of times we paying attention to to the things of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, we looking at you know what we what we have planned. Like for example, work. Oh, I'm gonna definitely go to work tomorrow, and you know, work, work, work. Right. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we not focus on faith, right? The uh -huh. problem with that is I spoke a lot of, I spoke to a lot of people and instead of them, you know, paying attention to what the most high got planned for them, as soon as they woke up, basically the scriptures say, uh, put him first in all things to follow. Mm -hmm. So when you wake up in the morning, you thank him for waking you up. Uh -huh. You understand? Mm -hmm. But instead, they're more worried about waking up and going to work. Okay. The, when mm. the main focus is supposed to be on the most high for waking you up. That's right. Because if it wasn't for the most high, you would have never woke up. That's right. Right. More mm -hmm. focus on faith and not focus and not focusing on working your day to day. Because you don't even know if you're going to be at work for tomorrow. You not, you don't know if you're going to be at work for the next day. That's right. But if you the the best chance you got is putting your focus on the Most High, so you know that that would be a more uh, a guarantee that He might keep you up for that for that next day. Mm. You understand? That's right. If you don't put Him first, then the things that you ask Him for or the things that you think is gonna come might not happen Darn. because you didn't put your focus where it needed to be. That's right. Walk by faith, not by sight. More by faith, not by sight. And that goes to that scripture I read earlier. We're supposed to keep our mind, uh, our, our, your treasures in heaven. And mm -hmm. if we do that, all things will be added. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we wonder why a lot of stuff not, not happening for us because we're not putting him first. We say we do. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us, even in the truth, but we don't put him first. We put everything mm -hmm. first except for him. Mm -hmm. uh, I made right. it my uh, business. And and me and my wife was telling each other this, that as soon as I wake up in the morning, I can't leave until we do a prayer. Mm. You know, I'm not. I can't leave because that's right there is the covering. So just mm -hmm. in case later on in that day I might pass away, a higher forbid, mm -hmm. or something might happen, I know exactly where I'm going huh. because I made it my business to speak to the Most High before I left. That's right. And you didn't take it for granted that you was going to come back through that door. Exactly. And that's, what a lot, that's a lot of times that's what we do. We take for granted. All right, Ark, you got that uh, Micah 718? Yes, sir. Book of Micah 718. Who is, who is a higher like unto thee that pardoneth in iniquity 
and passeth by transgression on the remnant of his heritage. He retaineth nor his anger forever, because he delighteth in mercy. Continue. See? So basically, it said God does not pardon inequity forever. God, is, like right now, I winked at your, I winked at the time of your ignorance, but He's not going to do that forever. I pardon you, uh, put you with my grace and mercy, but I'm not going to do that forever. It's going to come a time, like the young man just asked me. It's going to come a time where he says, "I, I what, what's that scripture? It says, um, he likes." He likes obedience rather than sacrifice. God, obedience is better. Oh, yeah. than obedience sacrifice. is better than sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? Somebody can find that real quick and read it. But obedience is better than you keep asking for forgiveness. Just be obedient to the Father, right? Because He's not going to hold this grace forever. He's not going to keep pardoning us forever. He's going to put that smack down on us one of these days because. Romans 6, 23 has to come into fruition for the wages of sin is death. Especially if you un unrepentant, you going to get put to death. God is a man of war. And we get him mixed up with that God of the Sunday church that's going to hug us and kiss us and the preacher tell you God loved the sinner and not the sin, which makes no sense. And that's going to get a lot of our people put to death too. Because if I see that God loved my sin, I'm still here. What? incentive is it to me to turn my feet to him if i can stand and still go to heaven that makes no sense that make this whole book non and void and god said he is not the author of confusion con i found that scripture for you first bring it out, out. bring it out 1522 mm -hmm. it says and samuel said hath the most high as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in o obeying the voice of the most high behold to obey to obey is better than sacrifice mm -hmm. and to hearken than the fat of rams mm -hmm. man to obey and hearken means to listen because through listening you get understanding right uh -huh. So that is better than keep saying, well, God, forgive me. Just do what he tells you to do. Please, God, forgive my sins. I repent for this when I And I do that. You know what I'm saying? So instead of doing, instead of asking for forgiveness, just listen, just be obedient, and just do what he tells you to do. That's what your parents told you back in the day. Just do what I tell you to do. It's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. All right, Isaiah 55 and 6 all the way to 11. Somebody got it? I'm working on it. One second. You ready, Mala? Yeah, go ahead. Huh? You said Isaiah fifty five? Yeah, fifty five and six. Isaiah 55 and 6. Mm -hmm. Seek ye the most high while he may be found. Mm -hmm. Call ye upon him while he is near. Mm -hmm. 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Mm -hmm. And let him return unto the most high and he will give mercy upon him. Now, and to see, now, now God gives us... Uh, uh, an incentive. The only way he's going to give you mercy if what if you turn unto him. He's not going to give you mercy if you continue to stay wicked and just say, "I believe, I believe," but I'm still going to be wicked. Guess what? God ain't going to have no mercy for that. Go ahead, up. Con, and to our power, for he will abundantly pardon. Mm -hmm. Eight. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Stop right there, Ock. I want to go back on what it said. He will abundantly pardon. Because it's a lot of times 
people think that, well, I've done this and that, and it, I don't think God will uh, forgive me for this. I've done a sin is so bad, I don't think the Most High God will forgive me for this. But we got to remember, when, what did Paul do before he came into the truth? Paul was killing Israelites. Paul was killing believers. All the prophets, did, none of the prophets had squeaky clean lives. But God, they turned to God and he forgave them and he used them for his purpose, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and a lot of people think that uh, I can't be forgiven for what I've done. But God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. I don't think like you think. Um, God. We can't forgive people for, for like small things that happen in our life that somebody do to us. We find it hard to forgive them for small things. But God said, I don't think like you think. You know what I'm saying? My thoughts are not your thoughts. Keep going. Um, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, mm -hmm. saith the Most High. 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, mm -hmm. and my thoughts than your thoughts. Mm -hmm. 10. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither but whether the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater 11 so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto my unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall per, 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 prosper, Salakia, mm -hmm. in the things whereto I send it. Boom. 12. So, go ahead, huh? For ye shall go out. With no, no, that's it. That's it. That's it, huh? So it says, I plead, and it shall prosper in that whereunto I send it. So again, God's word will not come by void. So that's why it is imperative that we make haste and delay not to keep his laws, statutes, and commandments, because we know that uh, the ways of the sin is death. We know that most High God will not continue to pardon us in our wicked ways. We know that one day, sooner or later, he's going to make he's going to make good on his word to take us out. It's just mm -hmm. that simple. And not just, and he might not, see, just taking us out sometime will be just too easy. He's going to put you, make you a base, make you lose your job i've seen it happen make you lose your family make you lose everything make you suffer right here in this earth because we not keeping his laws statutes and commandments and live as he would have us live all right so we're going to close it out on this uh give me ecclesiastes 12 and 13. now let's off you got something you want to bring up no, I just I just think it's an amazing lesson. Oh, praise it's, all praise. It's, it's, uh, you got Jim, Jim, you got something you want to bring up? No, sir. Same thing that Matt said. It's an amazing lesson, man. I appreciate y'all big time for reaching oh, out. Oh man, I appreciate y'all brothers, man. All right, let's get Ecclesiastes 12 13. That's what we're gonna close out with. Hey, uh Malak. Mm -hmm. It's just um it's amazing because I was just talking to Brother Jim and Brother Doug on a matter where I was saying that, you know, we need to move fast on the matter. But um yeah, we don't we don't understand how, you know, how much time we have. We don't know, you know what I'm saying? So we we have to make sure that we're not postponing something that's supposed to be done immediately. Huh. You know what I'm saying? Or, oh, or, or trying to push back something too far. Mm. Thinking that we the ones that have that time. Yeah, we don't, we don't. We don't know. Yeah, we don't have that time. It's all in like 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 the scripture we just read. It is of Christ that gives us grace and uh mercy and 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 um that time period. It's not up to us. Because if it was up to us, we would never die. I had somebody really? tell me that before. He said, Man, because I was in the Bible bike, this was years ago when I first came into the truth, and the guy asked me. Do you really want to go to heaven? I said, yeah. He said, man, I don't want to die. I'm going to stay here forever and live. Just, I'm not going to repeat the exact words that he said, but it was some explicit. It was a wicked life he wanted to continue living. 
Mm. So if it was up to us, we would stay right. Not nah, if it was up to a lot of us, we would stay right here on earth being wicked forever. But God yeah. has to put an end to it, just like He did in the flood, just like He did in Sodom and Gomorrah, and just like He's going to do it right here in Babylon. So mm. let's not be those ones banging on that door trying to get Noah to open it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Let's not be those ones. Let's be inside the ark instead of on the mm. outside getting that recompense of the Most High God. Come, come. All right. Uh, bring that uh, Ecclesiastes 12, 13 out. Joe got it. Oh, okay, got Joe, it. bring it up. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Ahiah and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Come. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. For Ahiah shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil. Kind. All praises to the most high. And with that being said, I'm Brother Yeshuron. I got Brother Jim and Brother Matthew. Go ahead, I'll say little man, say your name. Brother Yawal. Brother Yawal. All praises. And the lesson is make haste and delay not. All praise to the most high God. We out. Man, all praise to the most high. We appreciate all it. All praise. Shalom, man. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. Sometimes I feel like tomorrow ain't promised. So I live life like tomorrow ain't promised. I used to be that dude on the block with a Glock in a pocket full of rocks. Wouldn't hesitate to run up in your spot Many times I could have been at Judah's side Then Jeff and Lil Donny got killed You think that'll make a Judah seal I just got another strap and went back to the trap And let Mary Jane help me not feel Walked around like things was all good Just thanking for it Never in wood Wasn't focused on the strippers Me, I was the money flippers Throw me up, what? Yeah, I wish a nigga would Real talk, wasn't worried about fatalities Either you take me out or you the casualty Living in sin Now I think back How could I ever take death so casually now? Of tomorrow, for thou know it's not what a day may bring forth. Man, real truth. But when you get children, your whole perspective changes, your perception and your objective changes. Some Negroes, they be scared of changes. You on the crash course, your route, man, your best to change. I'm trying to ask me, what made me get scripted up? The scriptures, man, they got the answers, bruh. It's like a diary, wrote by our ancestors. But they knew the people would try to handle us.